Good morning. I didn't hear that. Is that better? <laughs> okay. Today, we are welcoming, welcoming our guest pastor, Pastor Cesar Castaneda. Pastor Cesar is a graduate of Fabius Bible College with a Bachelor of Arts in Bible and Theology. Fabius College provides high-level training for future pastors and missionaries, Christian educators, leaders, and music ministers, and is located in Valenzuela City in Metro Manila area in the Philippines. An interesting detail is that the name Fabius is the short form of the name of the original school, which is just after the World War II, and it was called Far Eastern Bible Institute and Seminary, and those are the initials of Fabius. He is the former associate pastor of Christ of the Philippines, incorporated in the province of Bulacan, Philippines, until he was called to Canada to continue his ministerial journey. The Lord has bestowed on him many talents, including being a musician and a singer, and he has a special facility for inspiring youth to find their spiritual place. Currently, Pastor Caesar is the lead pastor of Faith Community Christian Church, which, as you know, shares this church building with us at St. Clair. So, this morning, let's put our hands together and give Pastor Caesar a warm St. Clair welcome. Chapter 
Deus e são do terra. Peter e John encountered a layman at a temple gate. Instead of offering him money, which the beggar was asking for, Peter, led by the Holy Spirit, recognized his deeper need. The need that is beyond Menasha, material things, that is healing. And through the power of Jesus Christ, Peter healed the layman, meeting his physical need, which led to his spiritual awakening. We will see how Peter and John encounter the lay beggar at the temple gate. Exemplifies how we, as Christians, as followers of Jesus, can effectively reach out to people around us. Let's take a look at the background of the passage. There was a lay man whose life was only at the hands and at the mercy of other people. We don't know his name, his nationality, his age, his background, but all we know is that he was marginalized. He was poor. He was homeless. He was homeless. And he was always at the entrance of the temple. It's called beautiful. Can you look at this, the person beside you, next to you? Can you tell her for me? You're beautiful. You're the most beautiful person in here this morning. And this lame beggar was carried being at the gate of the temple to ask alms from people who entered the temple. Some Jews and Soros believe that this gate is made up of fine Corinthian brass about 75 feet high with huge double doors so beautiful that the great itself doors were only covered over with silver and gold. The description of the beautiful gate is an indication that this entrance was reserved for special visitors. The beggars knew that only rich people were allowed into the temple through these preserved gates. Let's take a look at the first point. First point is perceiving the need. So we all together read the first point. Perceiving the need. It's taken from verses 1 to 5 of our text. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. So we read all together. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at a time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man was laying from birth who was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, for he was put every day to bed from those going to the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. So Peter and John went up to the temple to pray at three in the afternoon, and there was a lame man, the beggar, was paralyzed from birth. And you know, this man simply wanted to be supported by other people. He had no other choice but to ask for money. Otherwise, we starve to death. Have you known anyone who's, who's been begging to survive? Or have you experienced begging for something for you to live? So, he believed that begging at the beautiful gate was a means to survive. You know, in Judaism, there was a strong tradition that as giving or giving financial help to the poor, special beggars was an act of righteousness. It was an act of righteousness. Then Peter and John fixed their eyes on the layman. Peter said, Look at us. So the beggar gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. The man must have been very, very happy and encouraged Peter and John look at him intently. You know, most people, every time you encounter beggars, they would avoid them, right? There's a lot of people here in the city of Toronto. And we are very careful of looking at them eye to eye. We would avoid having eye to eye contact. Otherwise, these people would go and approach us and ask 
income could be used to obtain food or housing, and some use their income to buy alcohol or drugs, which can be harmful, right? Based on survey, ten hundred in Calgary, Alberta, claims that around four hundred dollars in three hours is possible. Four hundred dollars, and some of them can make hundreds of dollars in just few hours, and not all founders are homeless or lacking for money. You know that some of them have their own car, their own houses, and they make it a business. Generally, bartenders can make eight to sixteen dollars per hour, and they could even earn anywhere between ninety to one hundred dollars in a day. We do survey in Toronto. It says that their average income was about eight dollars per hour to thirty dollars per day, with an average. Monthly income of three hundred to five hundred dollars a month. Not bad business, right? So this raises the question of whether giving money to beggars or ten hundreds is beneficial to them or not. Should we give them or not? It's up to you. It's based on your conviction. Sorry, Peter John with the lame man so intently. He probably thought he had a big gift coming from these two disciples. So the lame man returned the eye contact with Peter and John. Perhaps he stretched out his arm and or a cup to receive money from them. So the lame man expected to receive something from the disciples, but he received not money. He received more than financial assistance. Because Peter and John knew what they had. They had their faith in Jesus. And through the gift of the Holy Spirit, they were able to give the lame man a unique gift. A unique gift. And God is something better for this beggar. It's not even money, it's beyond the financial thing. And it opened the door where Peter and John this lame man Perceiving the need. In this instance, Peter and John perceived accurately the need of the man. The need of the lame man. It opened the door for Peter and John to provide true healing. Expected people to help me to meet his daily needs, but Peter and John demonstrated the healing through the name and power of Jesus. Do you believe that? That there's power in the name of Jesus. If we have Jesus in our life, we can love on it. We have everything in Jesus. Is that an amen? So us believers, every time we look at person, every time we look at other people, do we perceive the real need of these people around us? Are we looking superficially on the facade? We have to look beyond what we see. Are we sensitive? Are we 
we were seated beneath the his people. But the thing is, sad, to, sad reality is, we believers have missed a lot of opportunities for evangelistic ministry. Right? When people come to us, asking for help, we always miss out this opportunity to share the gospel to these people. You know, the highways, the streets, the communities, the neighborhood. Listen to this. 
my support, encouragement, or practical help, tailored to their specific situation. But most of all, we need to introduce Jesus to them. We have to learn how to react the conversation. Such as I have given you. 
trust God for something completely out of the ordinary. Immediately the master Peter goes to gain strength. He receives strength when Peter said, rise up and walk. And when Peter took him by the right hand and lifted his temper up, the man entered the temple walking, leaping, and praising God. He could have left everything right away. But because of the power of Jesus, and because Peter was able to point his man to Jesus, message 